Hello everybody, this is Felix, and in this tutorial we're going to take the slow clock piece of code that we made in the last video and move it into a module to make it a little bit more reusable for one, and uh, we can add a little bit of configuration to it for our convenience. So let's get to it. First, here is roughly what a module looks like. You've got inputs and outputs defined, and you'll notice that the main module that comes with it, this is the default program, is called Mojo Top. It's a module, and it's got this setup. Inputs and outputs are defined first. So we see that. And then the module has a name, and sometimes it'll have parameters, certain attributes that you can give it, that you can specify when you create one. It's kind of like a variable that's specific to the module. And then you have the logic itself inside the module that regulates how the inputs relate to the output. Now, a module, when you create it like this, is kind of like a template. It won't actually run in its module form. What you have to do is create what we call an instance of it, or create the actual piece of hardware that looks like it behaves in the way that you described the module to behave. All right. We're going to first make our new module in a new file so we can get it out of here and clean it up a little bit. So we'll go under source, right click, new source, and I'll call it slow clock. And we want Verilog, of course. Let's look at our diagram here for the slow clock. We need to have the clock in. That's going to be our 50 megahertz clock straight out of the default FPGA clock. And the reset button, because if you recall, we had to worry about what happens if the board was just reset. We need to make sure all the counter and the, the clock start at zero. And then we need the clock out, which is where our modified slowed down clock signal will come out. Now, let's not worry about this parameter yet. Let's just get the clock working first, and then we'll worry about specifying the frequency. Get rid of all this. For, so for the most part, we can just copy what we had before and move it into this file. registers defining the counter turning this output here we're telling it that that output is also a register but that's just going to let us connect things up to the register okay and we're going to have to worry about implementing our module over here in the main module, but let's just focus on the slow clock module right now. Actually, since we wrote the code for this already, 
there's not a whole lot we have to do. We just want to go through here and make sure that all of the variables that we used and all the connections we made actually exist within this module, within slow clock. So we're using clock, yep, we have that, reset, we have that, reset, counter, we made that, clock out, we've made that, counter, 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 clock out, clock out. Okay, so this actually should work as a module all by itself. Now we come back over where we want to use the clock, and we're going to create one. We do that by specifying the module name, or which is kind of like the template, slow clock, and then we're going to name this specific one that we're making. We'll call it clock one. And then we need to give it the different inputs and outputs that it needs, clock reset and clock out. So we tell it to receive its, its clock variable is we're defining here is going to be this clock, this right here is coming from here and then this name is coming from inside the module. RST is RST and clock out is while we don't have anything to hook up yet, we have this thing down here called clock out, but it doesn't actually exist because we moved it into this module. So we need to create a wire. Let's just call it one or clock one hertz. Now we want this wire to have the value of clock out from this slow clock that we called clock one. So we're gonna pass in clock one hertz wire into the clock out, which is the output. So now, whenever our slow clock, we're creating a new slow clock, we're giving it, we're hooking up the clock from this module, from the main module, we're hooking up the reset from the main module, and we're hooking up a wire that exists in the main module, and it's going to process things from this input, this input, and then hook it up so that the signal comes out on this output here. So now we can actually use clock one hertz. It should theoretically be a one hertz clock. So let's hook that up down here. And we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and try building it. All right, we've finished building without errors. Let's upload it, and hopefully we get a light that blinks once a second. There it is. We've got our one hertz blinky light. Great. Now, what if I wanted to hook up a two hertz light or a 10 hertz? Uh, light. Well, now that we've defined this module and of what a slow down clock looks like, we can create as many of them as we want. But we're going to run into one issue, 
if we want a slowed down, uh, a different speed than one hertz. We built this slow clock so that it always runs with a one hertz output clock. And that's, remember we did this calculation to figure out what the counter needs to go up to in order to give us a one hertz output. Now, let's make it so that we can specify a parameter so that when we create our clock, we can tell it how fast we want the output to be, and it will build that for us. First thing we do is do this little thing up here and put the word parameter and then a variable name and then you can give it a default so we can make the default be 1 Hertz and now we can use this variable anywhere inside this module so instead of hard coding in 25 million let's make it do the calculation for us we have the 50 megahertz that we start with and then we've got our two inversions per clock cycle up down that's one clock cycle and then we want to divide by the final frequency that we want and whereas before we just divided by one now if we input a different frequency say 10 it'll divide by 10 the counter will be a little bit smaller and so it'll fill up faster and therefore the output clock will be faster when you put a faster frequency in. Let's do that. We're going to have to modify this now so that clock 1 has the parameter that we want. We do that by putting the dot inside the same symbol that we used for the parameter. Like this and we can specify one. So now clock one has been built and it will give us one hertz out, one hertz frequency clock. Now, if we wanted to do our 10 hertz clock, we can just copy and paste this and build a second clock and it's just gonna reuse this template for what a slow clock looks like. All this hardware pattern has been defined and we just need to specify the frequency that we want. That is really handy. So let's assign LED 5 explicitly to clock 10 Hertz and then we need a 10 Hertz here which means we need to create a clock 10 Hertz wire great let's try building it sweet finished upload oh oh we got an error what happened Signal 5, oh, it's driven multiple times. We forgot to change that to a 4. Okay. Now let's try. All right, there we go. Finished building. We'll program that. And look at that. We've got our 1 hertz light and then we've got our 10 hertz light so we can build as many of those 
different clocks as we want. I hope you understand modules a little bit better now. Overall, they're used for reusability in our, our code and in our hardware, and they can help us to simplify things down a lot, shorten our files, keep things clean. Um, and so yeah, overall they're super, super helpful tools in Verilog. If you have questions about modules and how to use them, feel free to leave a comment and I will get back to you. In the next tutorial, we're going to simplify this even further because I don't want to even have to copy and paste this twice. I would rather be able to put it into a loop. So we're going to talk about generate loops next time. Stick around. See ya.